The Word of Faith Netcast is on the air. Well, praise the Lord. This is Dr. Bill Bailey, and this is the Word of Faith Netcast. I'm glad you could join us once again this week as we continue with our message on you gotta get out of the boat. Now this message was taken from a live service uh, where I taught at Faith and Victory Church in Greensboro, North Carolina. And uh, I just think that there's something, I know we've covered this topic to a certain extent before, but when you get into a message like this that's taught live uh, with a congregation there that's pulling the word and the, the, the spirit of God is in operation, uh, I tell you, it can make a lot of difference in the delivery and in what we get into. So I just think this is going to be a blessing to continue this from last week. So let's go directly into that service already in progress. Maybe help some of you. It helped me when I found out about this. There are areas that you are very knowledgeable in the natural. And for instance, I have studied natural health and I got my ND degree, natural health degree, doctorate. And in studying about natural health and studying about really sickness, disease, and ways to counteract it, <laughs> you get a lot of natural knowledge. And when you get a lot of natural knowledge, and then you have a situation in your own life, you immediately think about all the natural things. Well, this is happening in my body. I need to counter it with this. I need this is going on. This may lead to this. All of this knowledge that you have can adversely affect your faith. Okay? Now it's important to get a hold of that because that's exactly what happened to these guys in the boat. They're fishermen. They know the sea. They know what can happen when the wind gets up as it was. They they know about the boat being swamped and them sinking. They had all this natural knowledge, and so when they saw the wind, they got into fear. Their reaction to natural knowledge was to be afraid. Kind of like when you start to walk across the road and you see the truck coming. You perceive that truck's coming, I better not get out in the road. See, there's nothing wrong with the knowledge. The knowledge is right. The knowledge is correct. That truck could hit you and kill you. That's no reason to be afraid of the truck. It's a reason to respect the truck. <laughs> I respect that truck, and it's right to go down the road and me not get in front of it. <laughs> so I use my natural knowledge to my benefit. But if I'm in a situation where I'm operating at a, on a higher law, I'm operating in faith, and that natural knowledge begins to come against my faith, and come against where I'm at spiritually, I need to turn from that fear, turn from that knowledge in the sense of letting it stop the operation of my faith. It doesn't mean I throw the knowledge out the window. It doesn't mean I just ignore the truck. <laughs> no, but I'm operating on a higher law. I've gotten a hold of something that's bigger than the sickness and disease that may be trying to attach itself to my body. As I experience a symptom, I may look at that symptom and be perplexed. I may perceive a symptom, but I don't let the symptom control my fear or my faith. Now you say, well, yeah, but Dr. Bell, I can't help it. I can't help it. I can't. No, wait a minute. You can so help it. How can I say that? Because it says, take courage. Stop being afraid. In other words, Jesus is telling them it's totally under your control. This is not something that's going to overcome you and overtake you that you cannot do anything about. If it was, if that was the case, he would have told them, hold on guys, I'm coming, there's nothing you can do about it. But he didn't do that. He was constantly telling them, oh you of your little faith, why did you doubt? Why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? Because he was constantly teaching them faith. And they weren't getting a hold of it to the level that they should have, which is why he kept, and this is a King James term here, upbraiding them 
for their lack of faith. That just means that he finds fault with the fact that they weren't in faith. Now here's the thing. I, I really want Jesus to marvel at my faith, not at my unbelief, okay? <laughs> Amen. So when I'm in a situation that the symptom comes and I perceive it and I begin to feel fear, I need to take courage. I need to stop being afraid. I need to realize Jesus is I am. He's God, manifest in the flesh. He's now at the right hand of the Father interceding for me. He is making it possible for me to do what he's told us we can do, which is take a stand in faith, confess the word of God, believe that by his stripes we were healed, receive our manifestation of our healing, because actually we are the healed. You know, it's not a matter of us getting healed. It's a matter of us receiving the manifestation of the healing that's already ours because we're the healed. So that's what we got to do. We got to take courage, aggressively, actively take it. We've got to stop being afraid. If you find yourself in fear, and fear can manifest itself not in terror, not in, oh my goodness, you know, that kind of quaking fear. Fear can manifest itself in simply a concern, anxiety. There's levels of fear, just like there's levels of faith. There's levels of fear. And fear is never to be tolerated. Did you get that? Yeah, but Dr. Bill, a little fear is a good thing. No. There is no case that fear is a good thing. When people say fear is a good thing, what they mean is the respect of the truck is a good thing. I can have respect for that truck without being afraid of it. Matter of fact, if I was truly afraid of it, I just wouldn't go near a truck, which means I'd never drive. <laughs> you know? I'm not afraid of the truck. I am aware <laughs> that that truck could do damage if it's doing 60 miles an hour and I step in front of it. That's simply an awareness. That's not fear. That's knowledge that I can use to my benefit. But it doesn't mean I have to be in fear. Same thing is true. Let's say that your child develops symptoms and becomes extremely sick. What comes upon you? Fear. Oh my goodness, what am I going to do? My child, you know. The fear comes upon you, upon you. But what do you do with it? You take courage. You seize upon courage. You stop being afraid. You arrest that in your life and in your heart and in your spirit. And you say, no, I am not moved by these symptoms. I am not moved by the sickness and disease that I see in manifestation. I am moved only by the word of God. Whose report am I going to believe? I'm going to believe the report of the Lord. And the report of the Lord is that he is the healed of the Lord. Therefore, I stand in faith. I will not be afraid. And then you'll notice people will start criticizing you because you're not in fear. Aren't you? What's the matter with you? Your child is... Blah, 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 blah. See, they get all bent out of shape because you're the one standing there going, everything's going to be fine. We're all right. Don't worry about it. And they're like, well, what's the matter with you? I'll tell you what's the matter with me. I'm believing the word. There's nothing the matter with me. And you can go do what you want to do. Your unbelief will not make the word of God of none effect in my life. See, and if you let people around you drag you down, See, the disciples are still in the boat screaming, Who help? If Peter had been listening to them, he wouldn't have gotten out of the boat. See what I'm saying? If your family is saying, Oh my goodness, what are you going to do? And constantly, you know, how are you going to make meet this bill? And how, what's, you lost your job. And you're standing there going, That's all right. God supplies all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm a tither and a giver. My needs are met. And they're like, oh, the boy's done lost his mind. What in the world? Amen. And what are they doing? They're dragging you down. Trying to. Now, their love and concern is motivating them to tell you all these things. <laughs> Little do they know, they're fighting against you. 
Don't let those left in the boat keep you from getting out of the boat. Amen? They're still in the boat. They're getting wet. <laughs> the storm is, is, is affecting them adversely. <laughs> but you're out there walking on the water. Now here's the thing about Peter. <laughs> Bless his heart. He, he got disturbed because of the natural circumstances he saw. But now let me ask you a question. And if Peter had been thinking straight, he'd have thought of this too. How often have I walked on the water when it was calm? I've never done this before. You telling me I can only walk on water when it's calm? Doesn't seem to be bothering Jesus. Look at him coming over the water with all those waves. You know, and he wasn't stumbling either. <laughs> He's walking very strongly and calmly on the water. I mean, as far as Peter knew, that's how you walk on water is when it's, you know, when it's boisterous. <laughs> he never see anybody walk on water. All the experience he had was Jesus doing this. But he saw, he perceived a problem. Now, very often that's exactly where you are. You perceive a problem. And really, there's not a problem. Why? Because you're on a higher level. You've made some commitments. You stood in faith. And if you'll just stand there and stand there and not be affected by what you're seeing, you're going to come out on the other side and you're going to be fine. He could have walked all the way to the other side of the sea if he had to. Those guys in that boat could have gone down in fear. And he would have just walked over across the other sea. I'm going to the other side if I have to walk. <laughs> Amen. But he was moved by what he saw. And that's exactly where we find ourselves a lot of times, a lot of times, sadly. We'll get into faith. We're really operating in faith. We're really even beginning to see results potentially. But then there'll be a setback. There'll be some physical symptom. There'll be some report. You know, we'll get a bill in the mail, and we open it up, and we look at it, and we go, oh, and it comes on us. And it's an opportunity to fail. Pass it on by. Take courage. Take it, seize it, hold on to it. That's how you win. And this is something, as I was driving in this morning, I was meditating on some of these things. It really struck me, courage and faith are closely tied together, obviously, from what we're reading here. And I thought about today, of course, we're celebrating Memorial Day and we're thinking about those that serve in the military. You know, that soldier out on the field, you know in the natural, fear comes. There is no question. They wouldn't be human if it didn't. But they take courage they do things that just we marvel at I mean there have been people who have you know a grenade gets thrown in the middle of their squad and they jump on the grenade to shield it from the rest of the people in the squad give their lives for their fellow soldiers there they had to take courage to do that that was a courageous move and they were heroes in doing so well, it's the same thing in faith. The difference is we don't have to give ourselves sacrificially. Jesus has already given himself sacrificially. We are not conquerors. We're more than conquerors because he's already done the sacrifice. He's already jumped on the grenade. All we got to do is enforce the victory. Take the courage. Stand in what he's given us. And now... We're more than conquerors because we're standing there receiving benefit of everything Jesus has done for us. What's he done for us? He bore our sicknesses. He carried our diseases. By his stripes we were, past tense, healed. Supernatural protection is ours. Look at Psalm 91. I mean, praise the Lord, all of these things are available to us if we just enforce our rights and, and privileges as believers. Amen? So you got to get out of the boat. you got to take a step. And notice getting out of the boat, you know, I think about Peter in that moment. 
he gets out of the boat and steps on the water. Don't you know that in that moment that he stepped on the water, he literally had to take courage. He had to lay hold on that. He thought Jesus had come and bless God, I am coming. I am going to walk on this water. And he did. But that moment that he stepped, that's the moment of truth. And that's where a lot of us are at today. We see a situation, we see a, a problem or whatever, you know, I don't know, maybe even salvation of a family member, something like that. And we go, Lord, oh, man, you got an opportunity. You can get it out of the boat. You can take a step. Take a step in faith. And when you do, you're going to find it's solid. And how can it be solid? It's water. But it's solid. You can walk on the water. How? By faith. By faith. You are no longer in fear, you're in faith. If you see circumstances around you beginning to say that you are failing, say, no, I take courage. No, I stop being afraid. I, by decision, refuse to be afraid. What the, the scripture says is that we take thoughts captive and bring them captive under the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? I'm kind of paraphrasing, but essentially that's what it says. I believe it's 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Uh, let me go over there and see if that is not the scripture that I'm thinking of. It's either 1 Corinthians or 2 Corinthians. Oh, I'm in the camp. <laughs> I'm in the amphitheater. No wonder I can't find it. <laughs> I'm like, oh, boy, that doesn't, that doesn't look at all like what I'm thinking of. I'll leave. All right, let's look at Second Corinthians chapter ten then. Ah, here we go. Second Corinthians chapter ten, and let's go to uh, verse four. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, that is physical, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity, this is what I was thinking of, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Every thought to the obedience of Christ. So if a thought comes that is contrary to what I'm believing and, and standing on, I need to take that thought captive. I need to stop the fear. I need to take the courage. I need to take this thought captive. Again, see it's aggressive. Taking a thought captive is not a passive thing, it's an aggressive thing. Take that thought captive. Now one time as I was studying this particular scripture and preparing for, uh, for a Bible study, uh, the Lord supernaturally revealed something to me that, that has just been a blessing to me in understanding the scripture in a deeper way. And that is this. He said, read... It's funny how the Lord does things. He has a sense of humor. Okay, I'm reading this, I'm studying this, I'm getting into the Greek and all the things I normally do. And he says, read that scripture backwards. I went, what? <laughs> he said, read it backwards. I said, what do you mean? He said, just do what I'm telling you to do. Okay. So here's what he showed me. Bring the thought captive, cast down the imagination, pull down the stronghold. In other words, it's in reverse order in terms of strength. The thought is where Satan starts. Then it becomes an imagination. And if you work on it long enough in the imagination, then it becomes a stronghold. Do you see that? So that's why he said read it backwards. Because you need to start with the thoughts. Okay? Take those captive. Then you need to work on those imaginations, casting those down. Again, aggressively, casting them down and then pull down the stronghold. Now the stronghold in the Greek is a fortified castle of arguments. If you study it out in the Strongs, you'll find out that that word stronghold means a fortified castle of arguments. In other words, you have built into your mind a structured system of arguments against whatever it is that you really ought to be doing. See, 
That's really what doubt, fear, and unbelief will do to you, is build a system in your mind. Satan wants to get in there and build into your mind that you can't do it, you'll never do it, you're a failure, you're always going to be a failure, you and your father and your father before him was a failure, and that's just the way it is. That is a fortified castle of arguments. Now what do we do with those? We pull them down. But it's easier to start with the thought before it becomes an imagination, before it becomes the stronghold. That's what the Lord was trying to show me when he showed me what this was all about. The word imagination is a Greek word that literally can be translated computations. Okay? In other words, hey, I'm familiar with computation because I work with computers all the time. If I plug the program into the computer, it'll chug away on that thing and it will compute. Well, that's what imaginations are. You plug something into your brain and it just runs in there like a program. It's just running all the time. You meditate, literally. So as you think on these thoughts, you start meditating on, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it. Oh, I'll never be able to do it. See, that's a program that begins to run, and it's running in the negative. So what I need to do with imagination, I need to cast it down. See, again, aggressive. Now what about thought? Bring into captivity every thought. See, thoughts that come that are not in obedience to Christ, you can tell which ones those are. Those are the ones that tell you you'll never make it. Those are the ones that'll tell you, that tell you that symptom of sickness and disease, that's going to kill you. You've got to bring that thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Now, Brother Hagin said many years ago, and I love this, he said, there's nothing you can do about the birds that fly over your head, but you can stop them from building a nest in your hair. Satan's going to run a thought by you. That's the way he does things. He knows what you should know, that the battlefield for you is in the mental realm. You are a spirit. Your spirit's right with God. Your spirit's full of the Holy Ghost if you're a spirit-filled believer, praise God. Amen. But your mind has to be renewed. Your mind doesn't instantly become right with God. Now, your spirit did. When you got born again, your spirit's right with God. Hallelujah. But your mind is still a battlefield. Your mind is where thoughts will come. Now, you can put thoughts in your mind, too. It's your mind. Amen. You can make a decision. I'm going to think only on... That's why God said, think on good things. Don't think on the bad things. Think on the good things. And oh, by the way, the Word of God is good and pure. <laughs> he reminded us that. Amen. So... Think on the good things. And then when these negative thoughts come, when the bird flies over your head, just, just let them go on by. Don't let them build the nest in your hair. Okay? Now, building the nest in your hair is when they get there and you start meditating on them. Oh, I can't do it. I can't make it. Oh, that symptom of sickness and disease, it hurts so much. You start meditating on it. And that's when it becomes an imagination. And then if left there long enough as an imagination, it will become a stronghold. And you will be defeated by that stronghold if you do not pull it down. But praise God, the first part of this verse, the weapons of our warfare are not physical, but they are mighty through God to even having the ability to pull down those strongholds. So the weapons of our warfare are not physical weapons. They're not swords and knives and guns. Those wouldn't do any good against the devil anyway because he's not physical. But the weapons we have, the sword of the Spirit, the shield of faith, those are spiritual weapons that will accomplish things when it comes to operating in faith. Now, I didn't even, I didn't even get into the scripture this morning because I didn't figure we'd get here. Praise the Lord. I'm glad we did. But I wanted you to see that, that that's what the Lord told me is to go in reverse. Very rarely have I ever had him tell me, read that scripture in reverse. But in this case, it really did bring something out to me. Amen. I saw the process. See, I'm one of those guys, I guess it's being a teacher. I don't know what it is, but I want to see the process. I want to see step A leading to step B leading to step C. It's just kind of my nature. And so when I see it that way, I start getting revelation. Oh, wait a minute. I can stop the thought. It's easier to pull down the thought. It's like it's easier to pull down a little sapling of a tree, a little twig sticking out of the ground. I can pull that out of the ground. It doesn't have much of a root system. But if I go over to a big old pine tree 
and try to pull that out of the ground. I've seen bulldozers push against just a plain old pine tree. You know, pine trees are not that stout, really. But big old bulldozer pushing against pine tree, hardly able to move it. But you take a little old twig and you pop it out of the ground, there's nothing to it. Same thing with the thought, same thing with then the imagination and the stronghold. Get it while it's small. Be aggressive now when those things start. Amen? Amen. Well, did you get anything out of this today? I know I sure did. I love getting into the Word like this and seeing these things develop, and I love to see the interaction of Scripture. I love to see it when things begin to pull together, when we start seeing things. I tell you what, when I read that in the Amplified where it says, I am. See, we read it to King James and it says, you know, uh, what, what is it? How does King James say it? It is I. Yeah, it is I. Be not afraid. Well, you know, that's good. Okay. Jesus says it is I. Well, that's nice. But the power of him saying, I am. Whoo, man, I tell you, that just got all over me. I'm reading the word and I'm going, wow. See, and that's how it affected them too. That's why he did it that way. Take courage. I am. Be not afraid. It was a command. It was, an, a, it was a get their attention kind of deal. Amen? Praise the Lord. Well, let's pray and then we'll be dismissed. Father God, we thank you for this word today. We thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit to bring it to our hearts. And Father, we just believe that it will reside there. We can meditate on these things and it will be a blessing and a help to us in how we live and move, how we operate, how we move in faith. We thank you, Father, for your word literally being the power source of our faith, Father God. And we thank you that you're instructing us and showing us what to do and how to live day in and day out. We thank you for this time that's been set aside to honor those, Father, that serve in the military, we just thank you for their safety, those that are serving in active duty right now. We thank you, Father, that they see themselves as they are, protectors of our freedoms. And we thank you for their service, Father. And we just pray blessings and favor and security and safety around them supernaturally. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, well, let's stand up, turn and look at somebody and say, take courage, and you're dismissed. Hallelujah. So Lord, we're out of time. I'm going to have to stop right here. I tell you what, I enjoyed being able to teach this at Faith and Victory Church, and I trust you enjoyed me bringing it to you uh, by, by way of the video through the netcast. And I tell you what, praise God, it is good to operate in the Word of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, let me share with you that you can write us here at Word of Faith Ministries, our address, Word of Faith Ministries, P.O. Box 5213-5213, High Point, North Carolina, our zip code 27262. And, of course, you can always write me in my email address. much faster to reach me. My email address, drbill, D-R-B-I-L-L, -L, at W-O-F-M dot O-R-G. Now, catch us on Word of Faith Radio, W-O-F-R dot O-R-G. We're on Monday through Friday, 11.30 a.m. in the morning, Eastern Time, on Word of Faith Radio. And, uh, of course, our netcast here, which is also carried on Word of Faith Radio, the audio portion, uh, Sunday mornings at 9.30, right after Kenneth Copeland's program at 9.30. Now, that's Eastern Time again. Join us again next time. Remember, until then, to fulfill the Word of God. The Word of Faith Netcast is brought to you by Word of Faith Ministries and our partners around the world.